Good morning. Today on the turn of a calendar page day called September 22nd. It is the first day of autumn. The first day of fall. Freya has given her wake-up call. Twilight grows dark. Hundla moves from the heathen altar. Now, I've made some statements about our poetic Edda and our prose Edda that they are Abrahamically biased. So I just want to clarify what I'm speaking about there. Those comments, just like our books, they are written for the seeker. They are written for the researcher who wants to know the deeper meaning behind things. You'll notice the hat I'm wearing. I will return to that. Our culture, for several hundreds of years since the Abrahamic cults were invented into existence, is under attack. It's always under attack. Appropriation of our culture and then assigning it to something else, whether that's one of the Abrahamic cults or just another geographical area of people, and then say that our ancestors had no culture. That's, a ta that's just a simple tactic that must be seen through. That is a deception. Our children are under attack. As a matter of fact, there is a major occurrence and I'd like to say it's in politics and in, in religion today, but it's not. It's not even spoken of other than amongst friends and different social media platforms of children being stolen as sex slaves. And this is amongst the world leaders, moneyed elite, potentially Hollywood, actors and actresses, politicians in America. As a matter of fact, I heard that one prominent, recent, not current, but recent president of the United States has partaken of this pedophilia. And he has said, just no black babies, only white babies, only white children. Even his wife has been said to have visited these areas. So you see, our children are under attack. What do our children represent? Our children represent our future. They're being programmed to hate our own culture, to hate our own past, to hate their own ancestry and where they came from. How? How are they being programmed this way? Well, when you have the religious institutions which are programming people, adults right down through children. You have the educational system, right from preschool all the way up through a higher education, programs the youth. Then when these people move on and they get into the working world and they get into politics, all they've been programmed with is culturally destructive things to our past, to our present, to who we are now. It is incumbent, it is essential that we teach our children well. So what do we teach them? And this is what I need to clarify about the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda. They do have stories that our children need to hear. Okay, we have Thor going to meet Skrimir and the competitions that Thor engaged in. Drinking from the horn, fighting Ella. We have Thor on a fishing expedition where he takes the head of a bull as his bait, throws it over the side and catches 
Yarmangundar. And as he's bringing Yarmangundar up, and his feet are crushed through the bottom of the boat, and he's pulling the Midgard serpent up, his feet are on the bottom of the ocean, and up comes the Midgard serpent. And then the giant cuts the line. And Midgard serpent escapes. Power, strength, and honor. Now, the hat. We have a story where Thor's hammer is stolen by Thrym, the giant Thrym. And to get that hammer back, one of the demands of Thrym is goddess Freya in marriage. Goddess Freya, the maiden. The maiden in marriage. You know, my mind goes back to Numbers 31, 17 through 19 with all of this sex slavery in the Old Testament. But anyway, Freya, in a huff, turns and says, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Will I marry the giant kind? What will my people think of me? And so, Heimdall, our Lord, the whitest of gods, says, let's send Loritha. Loritha is Thor. His very name means, and we put this into our books, his very name means laughter. The laughing god, Thor, the jolly one. It is from Thor in that story that the Abrahamic cultural appropriation came up with Santa Claus and the eight reindeer. All of those eight reindeer have Germanic names. Thor, the red, red beard, or mine's gray, but the red beard. He rides through the night to the hall of Thrym. But not just to get back his hammer. See, that's what that's what the reason that Thrym stole it was to get Freya as a bride. Freya, future generations. The continuance of our culture. Without Freya, you have no future. So, the theft of our maidens, Numbers 31, 17 through 19, Pedophile Island, only white babies, is absolute theft of our culture. Appropriation through indoctrination. But it was more than that. Because why did Thor go? Why did Thor go instead of Freya? Well, he went because Freya calls him an old friend. Thor. The most masculine figure you're going to encounter in our lore. Thor went to protect the maiden. Now, if you think in this modern climate that anyone un other than <clears throat> the current regime is going to go after that group of people who thinks they are above the law, then maybe you need to rethink that. There is no one on the ticket other than the current office holder who has the backbone and the dignity, the honor to go after that group of people. If that office is replaced, then that whole situation 
will be swept under the rug. It will disappear. It will be forgotten. Or, or just labeled as a conspiracy theory. And there will be no ramifications for actions against our culture, against our maidens. Thor said no. And he went. And not only did he get back his hammer, but he slew all the giant kind who had taken his hammer and who had demanded the hand of our maiden goddess in a deplorable matrimony, which would have been by force. By force. Freya was being forced to go to a dark island. Think about that. These stories are only in one location. And that location is in our Eddas, the poetic Edda, the prose Edda. Our children need to hear these stories, but the seeker must be able to discern. These stories are to be told by parents to their children so that they can pass those stories on to their children. We, like Thor, must take back our hammer. We must take back our strength. We must take back our future. We must reclaim our past from those who have stolen it and appropriated it as something Abrahamic, something foreign. You know, I hear about appropriation all the time. And I realize there's a lot of hateful race baiters out there. But there's more people that are good. So when I, when I say these things, I just want to make sure that you know I'm only speaking of those hateful race baiters. But I hear people talking about appropriation. And this is even in politics and in religion. Appropriation. White people can't do that. You're appropriating. But then I see non-white people with dyed blonde hair. Or, or well, look at the season we're coming up with. I just explained who Santa is. Santa is Thor riding through the night sky. The eight reindeer. The eight reindeer of Germanic names that represent the lunar cycles. Like Sleipnir has eight legs. And he's the laughing god. Oh! <laughs> Oh, oh, he's the laughing god. Put the pieces together. Santa is Thor. The horned wild beasts are Thors. Tan Yoster and Tan Kristner. But you go to the so store and you see an appropriation. You see Blackface Santa. Hmm. <laughs> so, our youth must be taught to allow strength and honor to defend the past, to have strength and honor in the present, and to pass that on to their posterity as handed to them from us. So, my clarification about the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda is yes, they are Abrahamically biased. Thor does not go and kill the brides of berserkers, Odin's warriors, the seeker, the researcher, the one who searches for the deeper meaning of things must realize who wrote that and why wrote they wrote that. But our children, yeah, they need to hear about Thor getting his hammer back. They need to hear about Thor's fishing expedition and the competition with Skrimir. And how, and in that story, very importantly, and we see a lot of this, we see a lot of Threats. Do in politics. Do what I say, or 
I'm going to throw a temper tantrum. And we're going to burn it down. Hmm. Do what I say. Don't fill that seat or we're going to burn it down. Well, you already been burning it down for like four months. Do as I say or else I'm going to break something of yours. It's a temper tantrum. Just like the three cults of Abraham, they're, they're illusions cast before your eyes to make you feel as though you cannot succeed against them, to steal your strength and honor, to make you feel as though it's futile to even try to go against them as they enslave you. Hmm. Well, what did Utgard Loki tell Thor as they left the Berg, the Berg, the place of chaos that Thor traveled to? What did he tell him? I will again use strong deceptions so that you will have no power over me. Mm -hmm. There, see, these stories need to be taught who are young and they need to be put into something they can relate to these aren't just stories that were about thousands of years ago these are stories that are timeless things are happening now to the person who wants to eliminate themselves from all of it well Thor didn't need to go battle Thrym for Freya he could have eliminated himself Thor didn't need to try three times to crush the skull of Skrymir with his horn Mjolnir. He could have just said, well, I'm going to eliminate myself. But he didn't. The warrior, the hero, cannot eliminate themselves. Our ancestors didn't eliminate themselves. They had the thing. They would go to the thing so their voices could be heard. Now these bergs, these places of chaos where the giant kind live, they're chaotic. They're always commotion, always things to dazzle and create illusions before your eyes. Walks in the nature. Walks, now even if you don't live in northern nature, there are areas of nature no matter where you are. I currently don't reside in those beautiful holy northern lands, though I and my spouse lived nearly our whole entire lives up there until recently we long to be back in our mind and we go there often but getting out into nature getting away from that chaos and allowing things to settle within you you cannot Thor never became part of the chaos Thor went down there for Freya he didn't say, well, I'm going to stick around here for a while, check it out, see what's happening. Thor, when he went with Skrymir to Utgard, he didn't stay there and say, well, I'm going to pitch my tent here for a while, see what's happening. He went down there, he competed in the games, which he was deceived at, deceptions, to make it appear as though they were victorious so that he would feel less he would feel unworthy not as strong but then he left and at the very end of the story the mountains were an illusion to deceive Thor make him feel insignificant we need to teach these stories to our young so they feel significant so they have strength and honor in themselves in the current generation and in their northern pagan ancestors. Our children also need to hear about Valhalla. 
Odin's Hall. Now, if you want to confuse them with the seeker's knowledge of our lore, then they'll walk away from it as confused as they are. Well, not quite so much, but about the Abrahamic heaven or paradise. When they're young, meat and pork, feasting with your ancestors. These are the things they see this time of year with the Samhain celebration, the Feast of Ul, Yul. They see these massive celebrations of folk gathering and they have a great time with brothers and sisters and cousins and second cousins and they're all gathered together in one place and guess what? Let them have in them that as Valhalla, as you teach them strength and honor. That is what the afterlife can be portrayed to them. When they become the seeker, they'll learn about reincarnation and rebirth from other goddess in the spirit of Odin. <clears throat> There's time for that. And I hope I've clarified that, that these stories need to be passed on. And that one day, those children will become seekers. And they'll look for the deeper meaning and hopefully they'll realize that there's Abrahamic influence in them. But until then, they need to possess that strength and honor. They need to possess that spirit of Thor. Both, both boys and girls. And that's all there is. There's two. Boys and girls both need to possess that spirit of Thor in them so that they can stand. We were never taught to kneel. Not to kneel to another group of people. Not to kneel to an ancestor. Not to kneel to a god nor a goddess. We stand on our feet in strength and honor. And that is what they recognize. That is what they recognize. When you go into nature, don't go there to talk. Go there to listen. Find yourself a, a fallen tree, a rock, or just a patch of earth to plant your rump on. Lean up against a tree and sit there and listen to the wind blow. Listen to the birds. Watch nature unfold around you. And allow yourself to heal from the chaos. Ponder. Let it talk to you. Let your mind go back in time to your ancestors. Let that blood memory, that blood memory come to life inside of you as you realize who you are and just sit there and absorb it all in as you sit there in nature soaking it all in ponder this I have been asked multiple times I've seen others asked in different areas online. If I call our lore Abrahamically influenced, Abrahamic translations, then what version do I recommend? And I answer, and I've heard, I've heard other people answer the same way. Thankfully, their own. Their own. Now, in saying that, those Abrahamically influenced versions, that is where we have the stories to teach our children. So we have to know the stories. We have to know the names. But as you sit there in nature and you look around and you let your blood memory come to life, you ponder it deeply and you feel the strength and valiancy from our folk soul. Realize. You don't need a book. 
the book is where you'll get the children's stories. But all those children's stories can be seen from northern nature, the northern cosmos. And you don't need a book for that. The Abrahamic cults have programmed the mind, gaslighted people that to have morals and virtue, to be an upstanding person and go to heaven, you need their book. But as you sit there in nature and you ponder your northern pagan ancestors, realize you don't. You don't, not as a seeker. Until next time, or till nestagong, good health, son.